let's just go to the questions. Yeah, fantastic. Question number one. Tell me one thing you'd want people to remember about you. Wow. Um, I'm not really sure I mind what they remember about me as mm. long as they remember me. Okay. Which is probably a weird question, thing to say, but I'm, I don't think I'm that important. So it's quite nice that people will remember me, so I always try and okay. do everything in the right way. But um, yeah, it's, it's one of those things. I'm, I'm not sure that it, I particularly have this hankering yeah. to be remembered mm -hmm. for something. Second question, mm. what is your greatest passion? My greatest passion I, is basically my independence and, mm. and storytelling. That's the two things I like. Yeah. Um, and I've, obviously I adore film and everything to do with film. But um, I've begun to realise as I've got older that being an independent artist and a, and a creator is more important to me than uh, just being a big budget yeah. director or producer. Um, so to help people achieve what they want to do artistically and to do things artistically myself, it's my greatest passion. Okay. Why did you move to London? I moved to London for university originally. Mm -hmm. um, it was Brunel University. I came to study film there okay. and um, loved it and uh, met my much better half there and have just, after travelling and a short hiatus away when we came back, um, just getting ourselves back on the feet financially, we always plan to come back. So um, yeah, it, it's university was original mm -hmm. and uh, just stayed from there, loved it. And you stayed because why? I mean, what, what's the thing you love about London? The thing I love about London well, it, I mean, it's so different to where I come from. Where I yeah. come from, everybody is basically working class, everybody's white, everybody is sort of kind of negative. Mm -hmm. uh, here I get to try lots of different things, meet lots of different people, eat lots of different food. You know, even though it can get to you at times, it's yeah. just exciting. It's exciting to, to meet yeah. people that otherwise, you know, where I come from, I would never. And, and it's, it's made me a better all person. The diversity in yeah, it makes you a better person. Yeah. I think if more people did a stint in a big city, it doesn't have to be yeah. London, I think they'd generally be better people mm. for it. And wh what would you change about London? Um, I'm not going to say weather. I'm not. Okay. Oh. <laughs> no, I'm just because I imagine <laughs> that would be the thing that said the most. Um, the thing I think I'd change about London is, is the transport. Mm -hmm. The transport in London is still from like Victoria's reign and it's built for like a million people and we've got 8 million now and they're planning for it to go up to 12 or something so yeah I think the transport is brilliant I think they run it really well for what they have but they need to upgrade it drastically especially in areas like we are in today where they just have like a town train service yeah, I agree yeah. do you think you could enjoy your life more? right now no Okay. If you'd have asked me three months ago, yes, mm. but I, I, or four months ago, but I made the leap to kind of get out of the nine to five. And right now, even though I still get stressed and, and stuff at times and everything else that goes with being independent, it's, I just don't think I could be having more fun than I am at the moment. So if I would ask you three months ago, what, what do you think was the, the thing that was stopping you from enjoying it as you are now? Fear. Fear. Simple as that. You know, it's scary to make the leap, especially in an expensive place, because yeah. London's expensive. So, yeah, all the time, scared. So every time you make the leap, within a week, you go, oh, my money's going to run out, and you instantly jump straight back into a mm. nine-to-five job. Um, that's not to say, you know, that you can afford to not work. Yeah, yeah. Um, everyone's got to do a bit of temp work or whatever, but if you want to be creative, I think fear is your biggest enemy. Mm. And for me, that was definitely, in London, that's really hard because you just, you know, you're sitting with people that constantly are focused on money and the yeah. 9 to 5 and, 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 and that's what's important, how much yeah. you're taking home, what do you drive, what do you wear and in actuality that kind of can end up blurring mm -hmm. your judgement. So yeah, fear was not going to be stop. Okay. Do you ever feel lonely? Um, yeah, obviously. Uh, I think a city is naturally, sometimes it does. I mean, I, you know, I'm very fortunate. I, mm -hmm. I live with my partner, so that's great. Um, so, you know, that rarely happens, but occasionally you do. Uh, you're in the middle of the city and you realise you know no one. Mm -hmm. Or you've walked around the city for a week and you've met no one you know. Um, but I also love my anonymity, mm -hmm. I, I, which, you know, obviously things like this probably don't help. <laughs> I love my anonymity. 
Um, so being in a city and, and knowing that I can sit in a cafe and watch people all day yeah, without yeah. anyone going, Brian, yeah. I actually enjoy. So, so yeah, I do get lonely at times, but not much. Okay. And what do you think is the world's biggest problem right now? Um, the world's biggest problem right now, I would say, to be fair, is a lot of the media. Okay. Um, the news seems to have way too much power. You know, I mean, when I was a kid, they had news at six, six o'clock and ten o'clock, and they were sort of half an hour and an hour at most. Mm -hmm. um, and you, you know, you got an overview of what was news. And now what you get is sort of a 24-hour rolling 15-minute pitch with mm -hmm. things like tweet us your thoughts on the right, economy. Yeah, yeah. I really don't care what Dave from Surrey thinks about the economy. And I, you know, I don't need to give you my feedback mm -hmm. on Leicester's promotion chances in the Premiership. It's just nonsense. Yeah. So it's all, you know, unfortunately with that and Made in Chelsea and, and, and not that Made in Chelsea is particularly bad, yeah. but you know, all this stuff that is just really just about selling the advertising mm -hmm. rather than a, a creative drive. Mm -hmm. For me, I, I think that's kind of the biggest problem. It's bigger than, I think we've always had issues yeah. with extremism and, and war and everything, you know, it's, it's life. You have to have one yeah. or the other, but I think now the way that it's portrayed mm -hmm. is particularly derisory and, and it's trying to get people to yeah. rise up because they'll get more news from it. Yeah, if yeah, they yeah. can convince you that everyone's bad and you all start fighting each other, then they can send a news crew to it. Whereas if you all just try and get on yeah. and, and deal with people being different, then there's nothing to report on. Okay. So then. Okay, and the last, <laughs> the, the, the million pounds question. Yeah. If I handed you a million pounds right now, what would you do? Cool. Um, well, the first thing I would do is say, this is great because I'm going to get to be independent for a lot longer. Um, I would probably punt half of it into one project a feature, and then the other half I would use to just get rid of the big debts. So I'd probably you know, make sure the mortgage was gone. Um, and things like that but yeah I would try and be more sensible because the initial thought is yeah I'd have the best seven days of my life but um, I think yeah apart from maybe a little holiday I think I would try and use it a bit more wisely mm -hmm. but that unfortunately comes with age whereas ten years ago I would have just spanked the yeah. and you know because I mean one million pounds isn't as much as it sounds no it's not it's it really not to be a lot, yeah it? exactly I mean a billion pounds would probably turn me into a megalomaniac lunatic yeah. But a million pounds, I'd just be a lunatic. All right. So that'd be quite cool. That's that's comforting to hear. <laughs> okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thank Have you. Have a lovely Sunday. Thanks. Bye. Bye.